everyone, this is Chris Keys for Premier Guitar. I'm hanging out at the Brooklyn Bowl in Nashville, Tennessee with John. John from Deer Tick, how are you doing? I'm doing just great, how are you? Real well. Uh, also, middle brother, plenty of other acts to check out uh, John's discography, but we're talking gear specifically with Deer Tick. Yep. Telecaster, though, has been with you for a long time. Yeah, um, I probably got it about 10 years ago at least. Uh, I bought it at this little shop in Lawrence, Kansas, while we were on tour. So 1978, uh, the custom. So, um, actually, a funny story about this. I wanted. To, I'm not much of a uh, guitar uh, repairman, and I needed to have the old pickups potted. And I thought I'd try to do it myself on the on my stovetop. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> how'd that work out? It worked great for this one. So this is the original. Okay. <laughs> Which is kind of where the mojo is, being yeah. that uh, wide range. Yeah, but I, I totally fried the uh, the bridge uh, pickup. Had to get a new one. Which, well, ironically, I mean, I know this is what really makes the guitar yeah. special, but I use almost exclusively the <laughs> bridge pickup. Do so. you know what bridge pickup you did put it into, put I, in there? I don't recall. I went, I, I took it to, uh, um, I think it was Corner Music in Nashville and just said, just whatever's the closest to the original approximation just, yeah now what do you were you seeking out a custom or was it kind of fell in your lap or were you always chasing one of these tellies i wasn't looking for a custom specifically but uh i had i had sat in with some friends and borrowed one of their tellies at uh at this show they were playing that i happened to be at, be in town for in baltimore and uh the quick and easy boys from portland oregon they're pretty awesome and Jimmy gave me his Telecaster, and uh, I was just able to do things differently and play like better. And <laughs> I just <laughs> attributed it to the Tele neck, which is like now my, I mean, I love it. And I like the weight of this thing. It just, it stays perfectly still, you know? And I'm sure you've recorded a bunch with it. Yeah, it's, um, you know, my main studio and live guitar, yeah. And uh, before we move on to anything else, I know you have a special one here we'll touch on that you built way back when, is yeah. uh, strings. What strings do you run? Uh, just Deodario 10s, nothing, nothing fancy. All across all the guitars, and typically 10s? Um, my standard tuning electric guitars, yeah. And then what other tunings are you playing in? Um, I play, well, I have the guitar that I built, I had it set up in a, uh, in a different tuning that, um, I guess it would be a, C sus4 open tuning so it goes from low to high C G C F C F so it goes lower and higher than standard tuning how did you fall into that one uh nick drake ah yeah yeah one of his tunings care to if i bring it out yeah yeah let the camera see it Ooh. yeah so tell us about this this is this is a, a home build i believe right yeah well, it's a warm -off neck and body um then i had Made out of eastern hard maple, which is why it weighs so much. I was going to say, it's pretty but dense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it resonates quite a bit, um, thanks to the wood. Um, I built this in 2003. Um, I took a, uh, a guitar building class at Knoll Guitars in Rhode Island. Um, and yeah, kind of learned the basics about, you know, what's going on with an electric guitar. and. Uh, not all the knowledge stuck. As I said, I'm not much of a repairman. I was going to say, did this come into existence before the stovetop pot removal? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and is there anything else we should know about this? Uh, the, the pickups, anything specific there? Or? Uh, just uh, P90s. Okay. Um, but I took out some of the. I didn't. I opted to not put in some of the other uh, switches, switches Circus. and stuff. Yeah. Um, keep it simple. Um, yeah, oh, but, well, you know, it goes, that low C is, uh, what are the gauges, I think, are 56, 42, 46, 56, 46, 32, 24, 13, and 10, I believe, yeah. And what songs are you using this on? Um, well, Mange was the first Deer Tick song that I used it on, and only for a while, so it kind of became... The nickname was the Mange Guitar. Yeah. Um, but since then, I've written a bunch of other songs in this tuning, like Sea of Clouds. 
and uh, jump starting. There's a real ringing quality to it. The yeah. tuning, as you can hear it off the guitar. Yeah, it's really great. It's it projects. And uh, what should we talk about next? What's the next one up here? Well, let's see. I'm curious to see if you have any of your jag stings. Jag stings. I don't have any of my jag stings with me, but I do own three of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a Gibson L6S um, that I just, I like the 24 fret neck. It's fun. It's got a good neck on it. It sounds pretty good. It's like my backup standard tuning guitar. And sometimes I have it, I drop the G to a G flat or F sharp for uh, this song, Don't Hurt of ours, so I can get this kind of, I can let the, uh, like the, the two of the chord ring out for a second before I hammer on the third, you know. But, yeah, this is usually my backup if I break a string. That is such an unusual guitar. I've, I'm not super familiar with, obviously, the single cut body shape, but yeah, the, yeah. the way it's stringed through the body like that. Yeah, it's a... Uh, it's a trip. It's kind of an unusual guitar. I don't see a lot of them. Where did you pick this one up? Are you recall? I bought it in, uh, I've, I've had this for a long time. I bought it probably around 2000 and 2002, 2003 maybe. So, yeah. um, I bought it at a guitar center in Attleboro, Massachusetts. <laughs> so you get around, like when you're traveling and doing tours, you get out and check for much gear? Um, or you kind of set on what you got every, now? Every once in a while. Yeah. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with the things that I, that I have. And um, I'm running out of room at home, so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's always a problem. Uh, anything else in this boat that you would want to claim as yours? Yeah. To talk about? Um, I started playing the Irish oh. Bazooki a few years ago, and I was touring around with an acoustic one made by a Gold Tone, and um, I like their stuff because it's pretty affordable and it's all sounds good and it's pretty well made. But I wanted an electric option, and uh, there kind of are none except for the Luna, um, what's it called, Moonbird. Uh, I've never even heard that, that they made these. Yeah, and let, I, I don't think they do anymore. But, I mean, this is unless you want to spend like thousands of dollars on a custom electric Irish bazooki, which yeah. uh, I didn't. <laughs> um, I don't blame you. But I, <laughs> I got this. Uh, now, where does it fit, like, when, in the I register got it on things, eBay. Like, like, almost like a, a mandolin? I, I see with um, the eight strings. Let's see. Yeah, it's, you know, you have four courses, and two are octaves. So you have G and D, and then A and D, and those are just unison. Um, Very Celtic. Cool. Yeah, it's, pretty, it's fun to mess around with. Uh, you can actually, uh, I don't know why, but it sounds just like, when I have it plugged in, it sounds just like money for nothing. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say the, the Celtic top. That's a, that's a great, yeah. Yeah. That's rad. Now, uh, is there another jazz master that's yours here? Uh, nope, the others are either belong to Ian or, or Delta Spirit. Gotcha. Well, should we talk about amps and pedals then? Sure. Yeah, Let's that's all I have on the road with me right now. So. All right, John, we are over by your pedal board, but we need to address the amp first. You have a Silverface Super Reverb, and yep. uh, you told me off camera that that is an original run, 70s. Yeah. Not not for uh, sure on what year, but definitely 70s. Yeah, the year escapes me now, but uh, I bought that here in Nashville. Yeah. How, how long have you had that? Uh, maybe five years or so. Okay, and is yeah. it just a touring thing, or do you plug it in for studio time too? Uh, mostly touring. Okay. I like, um, I actually really like the uh, Fender, I have the, the 15, the one 15 inch speaker bass breaker. Okay. Um, that I do a lot of recording at home with. Uh, I've really grown to like that for studio. But. Cool. 
Uh, you have a pedal board obviously here, that we, your feet, but not much going on there. So walk us through the few pedals you do have. Yeah, I'm not much of a, a boutique uh, <laughs> uh, pedals guy, um, but I do have, this is probably the nicest pedal I have. Uh, it's a Chase Bliss Brothers. Um, so you can, you can get really fancy with it, but I keep it pretty simple and just use the um, one half of it for a little boost and the other half for some overdrive. And you can run them separately. That's with the boost. That's with the drive. And that's with them both together. Um, I typically just keep the boost on at all times just to give it a little extra Pushing it Whatever. a little harder. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it sounds nice. Now, then, throughout the night, are you messing with the volume at all, really? Or is it you just kind of get the, the dynamics through your playing and how you're attacking the guitar? Um, I do a little rolling off volume okay. live, but uh, not much. Um, I don't know. I think I, I picked up most of what I know about dynamics from like Nirvana, you know, yeah. so it's just quiet, loud, quiet, loud. But, Which you're, you know, but, you've performed quite a few Nirvana covers. That's true. <laughs> um, yeah, what else? I have my full tone OCD pedal for um, mostly just when I take a guitar solo or whatever, which these will usually already be on. Definitely make it sing. Yeah. <laughs> it's noisy. I like noise. Uh, just the uh, the CH1 boss pedal, classic uh, chorus. Um, we use that in Dreams in the Ditch uh, for the whole song. Um, I like the chorus pedal. I like. Uh, I don't know, it's goofy, but yeah, as I say, so it's it for of, me. It gets like a but, cheesy rap sometimes, you know, yeah. like in terms of how it gets And applied. I think that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is. Uh, then my um, Valcoder uh, tremolo, um, which I dig because you can control the uh, input and output volumes. Um, so you can, you can act a lot of tremolo pedals. You hit it and you lose some volume. Yeah. This you could actually make it louder if you wanted, but I try to dial it in so it stays level. Um, and yeah. Now you're always using it at that kind of more extreme super chop level. Yeah. I, sometimes I roll the depth off so that it's uh, almost barely noticeable, but. Um, I don't know. Sometimes I sometimes I'll kneel down during the show and mess around with yeah. knobs or whatever. Um, my carbon copy, um, you know, it's a little delay for yeah. just a uh, yeah. If um, the song calls for it. Uh, I use that in me and my man. It's so tight, it almost kind of feels like another extended reverb more than a delay, just the way. It yeah, I have it set kind of in a weird way, but you know, that's uh, just the way I like it. And that's, you don't have to ask, you have no other reasons to do it than that. I have this great pedal right here, watch what this does. The note stopper. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the Electro Harmonics uh, hum debugger, because I do use the. Uh, I use mostly single coil pickups live, so you need that as a little secret weapon sometimes. Well, uh, John, I yeah. appreciate you taking the time. I think we're going to breeze through Ian's stuff before you guys uh, move on for soundtrack. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right, we're over here with Ian, back over by the guitars. Ian, how you doing? Good, how you doing? Real good, man. Thank you for doing this. I appreciate you, and uh, let's dive right into it. Cool. I've kind of been a Strat guy for a while. Yeah. Switch pre teams. Pre-pandemic, I was pretty much just playing like 80s Japanese Strats. Um, I have a couple of them that I love them so much and they have beautiful, like Fender gave me the Josephine custom pickups for them and stuff like oh, that. Wow. And pre-pandemic, that's pretty much all I played. And I don't know what happened over that year and a half, but when I came back and I was going through all of our guitars in our storage unit, 
Um, I pulled this, I was like, I haven't played this one in a couple years, and I was just like, I love this. And I think, kind of like what John was saying, sometimes when you just like find a guitar that you weren't expecting to, to have, like you start playing better. Yeah. So that's what happened with me. Now, sonically, what do you f uh, feel that the t Tele brings that the Strats were bringing, or maybe something different flavor, obviously, because they're yeah. beasts? Yeah. Um, well, I think specifically this one in particular, this is a Vintera modified that I got okay. from Stephen and Ben over at uh, Fender in Nashville. And um, one thing I didn't know when I got it, that I, but probably accounts for why it sounds so good, is that it comes with custom shop pickups in it. Oh, all right. And it's like a pretty affordable guitar. So I was just like, man, this thing sounds way better than I thought it would. Um, I like right out of the box and yeah, I just love it. It's just really fat pickups, or fat pickup sound because they have a four-way switch so you can kind of get a humbucker sound too instead of a three-way. Yeah, what's the fourth uh, selection in that? Because I'm not really familiar. I, I think it just combines the two pickups. Like okay. and, and yeah, it's got all sorts of weird stuff going on. It's got this button here, which like is supposed to kind of make it give that choked, strangled sound of like a, you know, like a, a cocked wall or something okay. like that. Yeah. Do you use it much or is it? I don't use it much, honestly. Not I just like the, yeah, I just like the way this guitar sounds and feels. In case you ever like cover some like Ziggy Stardust, you need that Mick Ronson yeah, thing, it's yeah. there. It's I there. do roll the tone sometimes when I do some <laughs> solos, you know, but yeah. Now, have you, I know that you've tinkered with, like you said, your Japanese strats. Have you done anything to this one or is it pretty much how This you one's got it? exactly how I got it and I wouldn't change anything about it whatsoever. Um, use 10 Steodaros, just like John. Um, pretty basic. Well, cool. Let's yeah. let's cruise through the guitars here. Yeah. All right. This one is a little interesting. I only have my uh, my new guitars with me. None of my like older vintage instruments. Is that kind of your game plan for when you go out on the road? Do you want to keep those ones? Nowadays, home, just, yeah, yeah. Just because like we we risked touring with those for so many years and got away with it yeah. that I feel like if something were to happen at this point, I'd feel like a Pretty silly, yeah. Yeah, I hear that. Um, this one is I just got from Fender. It's an American Professional Two Telecaster. Okay, yeah. But the wonderful people at Lawler sent me some pickups for it. Um, we just kind of got hooked up with them. They've been really awesome. Um, this is like the, their standard standard vintage Tele pickup, and then this one is supposed to mimic a Strat oh. neck pickup. It looks pretty cool. Very, very neat looking pickup, and it sounds great. I use it for when I capo. Any, on any song. Okay. So I'll use it for Dreams in the Ditch when I'm singing that one, or a bunch of other songs, yeah. It's funny because we just did a rig rundown with Jay Maskus actually on this stage, mm -hmm. and he had a guitar with one of those neck pickups loaded in it. Huh. And it was not the thing I would thought Jay Maskus would Me have. Me neither at all, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Ian O'Neill and Jay Maskus share the love of the lava. Wonderful. Yeah. What's up, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's well, keep that's moving that on. one. All that right. one's brand new. Yeah, you can tell. Yeah. It's super shiny. First tour. Now this one is, Deceptively new. Um, this is a Jazz Master that they, they no longer make these anymore. Um, it's kind of one of the Road Worn series, but it's more like a, uh, I think it was just kind of called like the vintage nitro cellulose finish. Okay. Um, and it just felt really good. I liked it because of the finish itself. And um, yeah, I had my friend at home, Dominic Panzarella, who was a really good guitar tech down in Providence, um, just take out the extra stuff that was going on up here and move the, uh, the toggle switch down here. So I don't hit it. Yeah. And change the pickups all the time. I hear that. Yeah. And this one I kind of use for some of our heavier stuff. Um, so when I play Drop D, like there's a song called The Rock. Yeah. And anything with the pickups we should know? Or are those what came These are with what it? came with it, actually. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds good. I like it. Right on. Yeah. And the neck, I assume, came with worn as well. Yeah, it is. Like yeah. If you can check it out, it's like, okay. it's got some of that checkering stuff. And sometimes I think that it can be a little overboard, but this one's pretty tasteful. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I wouldn't have, uh, you yeah. know, claimed it not to be if you had said that this wasn't natural done yeah exactly yourself. yeah and i'm yeah it's not like i'm trying to pretend i throw my guitar around or anything like that <laughs> those days are over yeah um and i got one more this one is an old one actually i got this with my stimulus check <laughs> um it's a blue gas jubilee from the 70s a guild uh, made in Westerly, Rhode Island, so I really kind of had to get it because that's where I live in Rhode Island. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and so I bought it off a guy in a Planet Fitness parking lot during the <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> um, and it was like just a great deal and it sounds awesome. And you know, I don't often have the extra money to just go buy a guitar from a Planet Fitness parking lot, but you know, yeah, I love it. It's great. My go to. It's what I write everything on to. Yeah, it sounds like it could be a good songwriting friend. It is, it is, it's great. 
And that's it. Well, Ian, should we move over to your amp and pedal board? Yeah, sounds good. All right. All right, Ian, we're over here by your amp and pedal board. I know you to be a twin reverb guy, modded one at that, but you have the twin amps. Tell me about the differences there. Yeah, I had a twin reverb, just like a, you know, a silver face twin reverb from the 70s that I bought for very cheap at Main Drag in Brooklyn years and years and years ago. Had it modded um, to sound more like a 60s one. And then um, at some point, I was just kind of getting tired of how harsh it was. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and then the, the beautiful people at Fender, specifically Michael Schultz, um, gifted me with this hand-wired uh, Fender uh, Tweed Twin, sorry. Um, and it's just wonderful. It sounds great. <laughs> Works really well with the Telecaster, I think, too. Yeah. Um, it's just like a powerful, but like not totally shrill amp, <laughs> which some, you know, some Fenders used to be able to be like that. Um, and, but we built baffles. And we didn't oh. show that before, but just so we can kind of control the sound on stage a little bit better for our in ears. Cool. And yeah. and uh, real quick to touch on that twin reverb, you mm -hmm. said it was a '70s. You wanted it to sound like a '60s. Does that mean like? Quicker breakup, lower yeah, headroom? Yeah, quicker breakup, lower headroom. And when that did happen, after a while, it just kind of started to sound farty and muddy after a long time. You know, and, and a lot of gigs. Yeah, a lot. Of, yeah, we brought it around the entire world many, many times. Um, and it just was also like in disrepair, like cigarette burns on it and <laughs> lots of alcohol spilled out over the years. So it's it was time dog. to move on. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we covered the amps. Let's uh, go to your pedal board. Yeah. Again, pretty simple stuff. I kind of have the carbon copy on for most of the show to kind of like you were saying with John, give it more of like a tight like reverb sound. And I just like the way that that sounds and it gives a little more dimension because we're just two guitars, bass and drums, you know? Yeah. Um, then the next one I have here is called the Black Cat Mini Tremolo. I got this at a shop in Providence, Rhode Island called Empire Guitars and they always suggest to me stuff that, because I'm not a total gear nerd, um, they give me ideas of what stuff is good for me. Um, but the cool thing about this one is it has another button which speeds up the tremolo. Ooh. Yeah, so you can kind of go from one to the other even in the same chord, which is really nice and cool. Um, next up is this jam pedal called Rattler. Um, usually I would have my friend Tomcat pedals um, builds me these bat pedals that are kind of like a rat. But I left that one at home this time, and I have this Rattler, and it's for like extreme leads. It's pretty loud. Just like searing, like really, really loud stuff. Um, and when you mean extreme, you mean like, like the feeling, not like the yeah, band. it like, needs not to like, like go Nuno over band the band whole band. Not yeah. like well, like not that '80s band, like extreme. No, 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 no. <laughs> just you know, for that rat sound. Then I have the full tone OCD, just for basic overdrive. Simple. Um, then I have the TC Electronics Hall of Fame pedal, which I use for multiple things. If it's just kind of a spring reverby thing. And then I use it the church setting when things are getting really kind of spacey. Like some volume swell stuff. Like that's even a little probably higher than I have it usually set. And then the mod function I use for the song called Mange. So it's just like during the verses to kind of give it another spacey feel. Real celestial sound. Yeah, yeah. It kind of just like sets the sets the mood. And then the analog chorus by MXR, which I honestly don't use too frequently, but it's just to have there in case I want to change something. <laughs> Because I've toured in the past with um, a Roland JC120 um, and kind of did two amps at once. So this is when I don't have that amp with me, this is kind of my option. And what, why not tour with it this time, the 120? Um, mostly because we're freighting things yeah. <laughs> and it's just so expensive. And so if we could lose anything that was like going to you know, make it more expensive to go on this tour after this pandemic and stuff, we were going to cut some of the fat off. But yeah, but it's, a, it's fine. It works great for that job. Well, awesome. Ian, thank you so much. I know we're up against Delta Spirit Soundcheck, so we'll get yeah. the hell out of here and uh, thank call you so it a day. Much. Yeah. Everyone stay safe. Have a good one. Thank you so much.